This is one of the most famous formulas in the world history. It is called the quadratic formula. With this formula, you can find zeros of any quadratic function ax squared plus bx plus c equal to zero. Most people learn this formula by heart, but very few understand why it works, where it comes from, and even fewer can appreciate the beauty behind its development. Just a little reminder. The quadratic formula describes the points shown here on the graph. We have Descartes' coordinate system with x-axis and y-axis and zero at origin, and we have some quadratic function. This quadratic function has the formula of ax squared plus bx plus c. And this quadratic function intersects the x-axis at these two points. These two points can be found by the quadratic formula x1 or 2 is equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a which we had started from. These points are zeros of the quadratic function. In other words, these are the points in which the function intersects the line y is equal to zero, or the x-axis. In algebraic terms, the quadratic formula is the solution of the equation ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero. What is the most amazing fact in this story is the fact that quadratic formula is not that old. We have data which shows that people were working on this problem in 2000 BC. Just to put that into perspective, 2000 BC means that there were people working on quadratic problems in ancient Babylon. This work was done different than today. Back then, people used the geometrical approach to it, and today we solve it algebraically. Later in history, in 300 BC, we encounter the ancient Greeks, who are working on special cases of quadratic formula with explicit solutions. This practice has continued to 600 to 900 AD when Persian and Indian mathematicians were working on more special cases of the quadratic formula with explicit solutions. The real breakthrough happened in 1637, when we got the quadratic formula in the form in which we use it today. That is the point in history in which the quadratic formula, which can give a solution to any case, not just in special cases, became known to us. Now we can clearly see that such an elementary formula, the quadratic formula, is not even 400 years old yet. You have to agree with me now that this is quite amazing. Now that I have introduced the history of the quadratic formula, let's jump to the problem which we have gathered here for. Let's solve the quadratic equation in its general form i.e. let's derive where quadratic formula comes from. We are going to start with an equation ax squared plus bx plus c equal to zero. Let's solve for x to get the quadratic formula. We can start by noticing that for a which is equal to zero, we get a linear equation. So for a is equal to zero, we get bx plus c is equal to zero, and that means that x is equal to negative c over b. So we have the quadratic formula for a which is different than zero. That means that we can divide the entire equation by a, and then we get that x squared plus b over ax plus c over a is equal to zero. Our goal is to isolate x. We have here the terms with x squared and x, and that makes our goal hard to achieve, but not impossible. We can use a simple trick to completing the square to overcome this obstacle. Just a little reminder. A complete square is as follows. 
a plus b squared is equal to a plus b in parentheses multiplied with a plus b in parentheses. This is then equal to a times a, which is a squared, plus a times b, which is a b, plus b times a, and finally plus b times b, which is b squared. That is equal to a squared plus 2ab and plus b squared. In our equation, we have x squared and we have b over ax. So, in our equation, we have x squared plus b over ax plus c over a. And in the square complete, we have a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. This means that x squared is going to play the part of a squared. And that, of course, means that 2ab is going to be b over ax. So let's write this in the more convenient form respectful of the number 2. So we have x squared plus 2b over ax, and we are going to multiply this with 1 half to eliminate the multiplication by 2 which we made here. Then we need something to play the part of b squared. As a squared is x squared and 2 times b over ax multiplied by 1 half is playing the part of 2ab. This means that 2 corresponds to 2 and a corresponds to x. So then b has to correspond to 1 half of the b over a. That means that we have to add the quantity of b squared to complete the square. And b squared is equal to b over 2a squared. Then our equation becomes x squared plus 2 times b over ax multiplied by 1 half plus b over 2a squared. And we are going to subtract b over 2a squared. We are going to add c over a, and that is going to be equal to zero. A little note here. We have to subtract this because we have artificially added it before. And our goal is not to change the equation which we had started from. Our goal is just to transform it. And then we have plus c over a, which is equal to zero. So this part of the equation then becomes x plus b over 2a squared. And then the entire equation becomes x plus b over 2a squared minus b over 2a squared and plus c over a, which is equal to zero. Now we have x contained in this bracket, and that is very useful if we want to isolate x. All that remains to do now is to algebraically manipulate this to get x on one side. So we get that x plus b over 2a squared is equal to b over 2a squared minus c over a. That means that x plus b over 2a squared is equal to b squared over 4a squared minus c over a. This means that x plus b over 2a squared is equal to b squared minus 4ac divided by 4a squared. As you can see now, we are getting close to the solution, as we have b squared minus 4ac in the numerator of the fraction on the right side of the equation. Now what we can do is we can take the square root of both sides. So we get the square root of x plus b over 2a square equal to a square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 4a squared. This is then going to be the absolute value of x plus b over 2a, and the right side is going to be a square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by two absolute values of a. 
Now to get rid of these absolute values, we get that x1 or 2 plus b over 2a is going to be equal to plus or minus a square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. We have the two solutions respectful of x because of the absolute value, one from the positive and the other from the negative side. So x1 or 2 is then going to be equal to negative b over 2a plus or minus a square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. This is then going to be x1 or 2 equal to negative b plus or minus a square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. And we finally have the quadratic formula. The beautiful thing about the quadratic formula is all the information which it gives us. And this is something which we often fail to see. If we observe the quadratic formula in the step 1 previous, we see that x1 or 2 is equal to negative b over 2a plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 4a squared. In this form, the quadratic formula tells us that there is a symmetry to the solutions to the roots of the quadratic polynomial, and that they are both symmetrical across the line of symmetry. Graphically, it looks like this. We have the Descartes coordinate system with x and y axis and origin. We have some arbitrary polynomial y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. The roots are these two points right here. If we take the point x is equal to negative b over 2a and then either add the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 4a squared, or we subtract it, which is 1 negative b over 2 minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a, we will always end up at a root. This then tells us that x is equal to negative b over 2a, which is this line right here, is a line of symmetry for the quadratic polynomial. The distance from the line of symmetry to each root is just a square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 4a squared. And this is this distance right here, and it is this distance right here. A square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 4a squared. This story then continues if you ask the question what happens if we have a cubic equation instead of a quadratic one. Is it possible to find the solutions by isolating x, in this case ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d is equal to zero? In this case the answer is yes. We can do that and this has an amazing story behind it which includes famous mathematicians Tartaglia and Cardano who have found the solution to this problem in the time when Rodrigo Borgia was the Pope. This story also continues if we have the powers of 4. So the equation is 8 x to the power 4 plus bx cubed plus cx squared plus dx plus e, which is equal to 0. We can solve this equation by isolating x as before, and this result belongs to 
Ferrari, who was student of previously mentioned Cardano. We run into problems when attempting to solve an equation which has the power of 5, and that is the equation ax to the power 5 plus bx to the power 4 plus cx cubed plus dx squared plus ex plus f equal to 0. This problem can't be solved by isolating x in general case. In fact, for powers from 5 and above, it is impossible to find the solution of such an equation by isolating x. Of course, I am talking here about the equations which are not some special cases. In general, there is no way to solve such an equation in terms of x. There doesn't exist a way to rearrange it into any sort of algebra to get x on one side and everything else on the other. That is pretty interesting. Why does the pattern stop at 5 when it has worked for 4, 3 and 2? The answer to this problem lies in a very beautiful and very deep area of mathematics called Galois theory, which is a part of abstract algebra. And yes, you have guessed that right. Galois is the man who had solved this problem. What is even more amazing is that Galois was not even 21 years old when he died. I am not going to cover all of this in today's video. This is just an introduction to the videos and topics which I am planning to cover in the future, and that also includes a full university level course on abstract algebra. If you want to see one amazing way to solve a quadratic equation which you have never seen before, then I suggest that you watch this video next. I hope that you have enjoyed watching. Please like, share, subscribe and leave a comment. I'll see you in the next video.